Welcome everybody to Nasaret the Prophetess channel and today you're going to get a threefer. That is right. It's going to be an exciting video today because I'm going to be doing three things actually. First and foremost, I'm going to be reviewing this deck that I received from the Honeypot Energy and Art Center. As you know, Lana Moon and I have a partnership, the Honey Pie Energy and Arts Metaphysical Shop and the Iwaju Life Center work together to really bring you the knowledge and the products, right? She got the stuff and I got the juju, Ashe. She got some juju too, though. That's why you need to buy your stuff from her because everything got her good juju in there. But as far as this partnership is, it's not really just about supplying you with the products, but it's about teaching you how to use them in this video i'm also going to show you how to metaphysically activate the deck just a cute little short video of how you do that and then i'm going to uh tell you why i love this deck and why this deck has become the deck that i use all the time and then we'll do a live reading with it now actually this is the third time I'm making this video. The first video, I accidentally deleted it to make room because I made the video a long time ago. And this deck is so awesome that it's been selling like hotcakes. So we go ahead and get your deck, okay? Um, Cause you're gonna love it after this after this review. So uh, and then the second video I did with a lawnmower in the background. I didn't even realize because I did it in front of my window and in the lawnmower. So all you can hear is like lawnmower. But that was a powerful message. So I still am going to post it if you want to uh, hear the message from the second time that I did the reading from this deck. So. This will be a third time, and I am so, so excited to see what Spirit has to say this third time around, all right? So let's talk uh, first and foremost about why I love this deck. Then we'll take a short little break for you to watch how to activate the deck as soon as you get it out of the box, and then we'll come back and I'll do a reading with it live so you can see it in action, okay? So first and foremost, um, uh, why do I love this deck? I love this deck. This is because of the work that I do. So I'm an ancestor medium. And as an ancestor medium, I am an energy worker. And how do I bring those two things together? See, our ancestors don't only live around us energetically, but they actually live inside of us in our epigenetic code. And so many times uh, how we do things has to do with our ancestral code, how we make decisions, what upsets us, what lets us brush things off of our shoulders. These traits inherently live with inside of our bodies. So in my work, when I work with a client, not only am I connecting you to your ancestors, but I'm trying to identify one of two things. Number one, what is the energy block that needs to be released, right? We're always completing a cycle. And so I'm trying to tap in ancestors that hitched a ride within your DNA code. What cycles are you trying to complete? What lessons do you want to learn? Sometimes that comes in the area of discomfort and lessons, Ashe. But it's because we are continuing to carbon copy transfer trauma. Any trauma that's not transformed or transmuted will be transferred, okay, period. So many times I'm trying to see the karmic runoff and things that have been transferred down to my clients and we can be able to release that. The second thing that I'm doing in my practice is we also have all of these gifts that have been lot, um, dormant for uh, so long. And I'm not only talking about your gift of gab or if you're extra cute or, you know, our little 3D gifts, but I am talking about your ancestral gifts, your shaman gifts, your seer gifts, you know, all of those dormant gifts that lie have been lying so deep i'm trying to awaken that part of you so as soon as i saw this an ancestral awakening deck and guidebook that this is really what this is for right <clears throat> for us to be able to be tapped in tuned in 
to what needs to be awakened in our life. This is what this deck is all about. So I was totally interested and uh, as a person who deals primarily with traits and behaviors. So the first thing that I'm gonna tell you just right out of the box, number one, the shipping was super fast because I was there for a Sunday event, fell in love with the deck and she graciously uh, sent it to me within 48 hours, I think I had it. I had it very quickly. So the shipping is on point first and foremost when you get your products from the Honey Pot Energy and Arts uh, Metaphysical Shop. So please do not be afraid to go to energyandarts.com right now and go ahead and get the deck, all right? So the cool thing is most people that are in this practices love boxes. I have so many trunks and boxes and little uh, hideaway little things that I keep things in. And I know that the author of this deck, she is all about that, right? Because first of all, this is some very good cardboard here. And listen to that. You hear that? That is a magnet closure, right? So you can reuse this. Every good spiritual practitioner, all the witchies, and we love these little boxes to put things in. So I love that this is a real sturdy box. <clears throat> as you see, I'm giving it as much pressure and it's not even bending that much. That is how good this box is for you to be able to reuse. You could paint it on the outside, redecorate it, and do fun things. Also, it has a velvety, like a faux velvet finish in here, which you can use for jewelry if you want to. So I'm already a front fan anyways, because I love boxes with decks that I can actually reuse for other things. Put crystals in, <clears throat> put crystals in, put talismans in, whatever, you know, however I want to do that, or actually keep the cards in there. Sometimes I occasionally do that. <laughs> again cute little box made out of good material <clears throat> i'm sorry y'all uh, made out of good material that can uh, be used for other things as well and it's just cute look she has the little um things on the back of the box i just i'm loving this all right so again why do I love this deck? As an ancestral medium and really trying to get the bottom of your traits, she actually has that in there. <clears throat> when you open the book, you'll see that each page is filled with different traits, the card descriptions, you know, she's bringing in that yin and yang energy so you can know what's going on. And then I love it because a part of recoding your DNA is behavioral changes. The quickest way that you can elevate an ancestor that wants you to complete a cycle is to tap in and see the choice that was that was the better choice, okay? So because of that, she has down here aligning strategies. And so I just love this. I really love it. If anything, I've been leaning more on, usually I read very, I come down, but I, I just go to the cards sometimes and it really saves me a little bit of energy of having to tap in directly because it does seem like the ancestors are truly speaking about the behavioral changes that I, that I or my client needs to make throughout that deck. Also, what I what I, I have a love hate relationship with as far as this this the guidebook is considered. She does have each section very clearly marked major arcana. You can kind of even thumb for the highly uh, orange pages to know the other sections. But here's family family court card so she has these orange sections to divide which does make it easy for you to read uh if you're reading based off of an ancestral awakening which i'll show you kind of how i do that when i open up the reading so the guidebook is awesome in addition to that on the major arcana which again is super super important i love that she has different elements she has the chakras in here she has if you're a herbalist and you want to bring in like flowers into your practice bring in these herbal or floral allies you know she has the different um 
things that you can be able to use for that. But in the major arcana, here's what I love. In addition to the yin and yang that you get in the minor arcana and the aligning message, she's also giving you journaling questions, questions to contemplate and affirmations, which you'll be able to see live when I do the reading. Now, here is also something. Let me tell you when I'm using tarot, I'm using tarot in two very distinct ways. The regular putting the deck together and just shuffling as a full deck, trying to be able to pull out the different messages. And I loved in the first one how each card that pulled, pulled in the three sections when I am reading and I am trying to get connected with ancestors. I've read like this even before I got the deck, but she gets it. She, she gets it because the way she lined everything up right in alignment of how you use these decks to really identify which ancestors. I'm all about ancestor reclamation and us sort of recapturing what we lost. She has that triggered. So for instance, when I am trying to identify an ancestor within the cards, I am breaking down the cards between the major arcana, the minor arcana, and the court cards because those are the primary sections of what makes a tarot deck. Now here she's made that really easy for me for a, a practitioner who reads like that and I'll show you why. First and foremost, the minor arcana, which we're speaking to the different behaviors that that ancestor or that within your DNA code, an aspect of yourself or an aspect of an ancestor, depending on who we're speaking with. I love that she has the minor arcana mostly in this kind of pewter gray. This makes it super easy when I'm trying to quickly be able to separate the cards from court, major, and minor. So I can really kind of delve down who this ancestor is. It makes it super easy for me to do that. Uh, in the minor arc or the major arcana, they're, they're more bold like colors. So you have this green, you have sort of this purplish uh, background color. You have a uh, nice deep ebony brown. So she's using more of the color palette within the major arcana cards. Again, which makes that so simple for an ancestral reader because I can easily, if I'm in a reading, I don't have to look at every card. I'm more paying attention to the tone of the card. Now, it's not a 100%. Most of the cards are like that, okay? For instance, uh, what you get from the uh, court cards, there's more vibrant colors in the cards. You know, there's uh, the backgrounds are more lighter are, are more lighter. The backgrounds are lighter than the backgrounds in the major arcana, which a few little exceptions, right? Like the moon card, she kind of fits, but still even there's some dynamics that's moving. It's still kind of like a base uh, background on the major arcana, more of a more range of the color palette in the court cards. And then again, we have mostly, uh, see how I was easily able, even there, I was able to see, oh, this card has a different tone than the other one. So I immediately knew, oh, this is uh, something that needs to be in the major arcana. So for me, that makes it super easy because that is how I'm reading. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and split the deck up like that. When I was uh, reading earlier, I loved it because it sort of did it on its own. And I was like, ah, that's perfect. And, you know, maybe I should I should trust it a little bit here that it'll do it the same. But, you know, as she likes to play tricks because we are in a retrograde. So while I'm going ahead and I'm separating this deck um, and getting ready to do the live read, why don't we pause here so you can watch and see how I charge the deck as soon as it comes out. And we'll see you on the other side. All right. So after I got this wonderful deck from the mail, again, from the Honey Pot Energy in Art Metaphysical Shop, and I took it out of the box, which you'll see the box and all of that when I go through the explanations. 
But first, I want to show you how to activate the deck. And beauty is always where the magic is, okay? She's always showing up where the magic is. <laughs> so, when I am connecting with the deck, I want to make sure that the first thing that I'm doing is setting it up according to the elements. I want to activate the elemental energy within the deck. And this is the easiest way to do that. First of all, I have something represented in each one of the elements at the point of where they are supposed to be. Meaning earth, I have four rose quartz here in the north or the earth section. In the east, which is aligned with air, I have the feather. So, and just so you know, this is north with pentacles. East, this is how I read, which is wands air energy south which is fire or swords energy and water which is emotions or cups energy now again i do read this many people associate wands with fire i do not when i am reading tarot for me it makes sense because i am an ancestral reader and i'm reading about ancestral energy and elemental energy that i am speaking in terms of how things are manifested and this is actually how things appear in tarot if you if you find when you look there's an order of tarot it's an order okay and so first the idea comes in uh, according to the way tarot is set up the idea comes in from the ether from the imagination from the unseen place we must move it into our emotional space this is where our imagination can kick in it almost builds a star to it a star david almost going across then we're going down because now we need to forge the fire within us a sword is forged by fire and so we are activating that powerful molecules within inside of our body and that's why i do use fire as the swords and fire is also representative of the south and then we go up to the home space which is how things are manifested actually in the 3d and so this is where you are going to come to the earth or the pentacles part of the energy so once you have everything set up according to now you can move to the next step so at this point what i'm going to do and i and i also make sure that i charge the book too because i use it for bibliomancy you don't always need the card sometimes you can just flip to a page and spirit will be able to communicate what it needs to uh, communicate so at this point i'm going to go into a deep meditation i may even set an intention of how i want to use this deck and then you can imagine energy starting to build up in your heart chakra because your heart energy center is primarily you know if you're going by how our bodies are made um, things come in through the heart the heart actually communicates to the brain far more than the brain communicates to the heart meaning that most of the message that we receive first are received in the heart center and then said to the brain but because we don't necessarily know this, we think everything comes within a thought, but it's really not. It comes in through an impulse that turns into a thought, Ashe. So if you focus in on your heart center, which is going to be ultimately the point that's going to communicate with your brain to tell your brain which card that your hands are going to pull. You just want to even see and imagine that an energetic cord is coming from your heart center to the deck, to the books. And everything is happening and the elements are coming together. You're just going to visualize all of this while you're breathing. Believing that energetically it is actually happening. And then you just want to do that as long as you need to. 
All right, so hopefully that was helpful in helping you be able to know how to activate the deck and connect with the deck as soon as you get it out of the box. There are some elaborate things I've done that I've tried sleeping with the decks, carrying them around with me to be able to connect with them. But honestly, that that simple, quick, it has the same results as some of more extensive um, avenues that I was using when I first started. So hopefully it'll work for you. All right. So I now have the deck separated as I would like. And again, loving how easy that was based off of the color palette that she used in the deck. Now, when I am identifying an ancestor and we're just going to go with a collective message, right? Go with the collective message. First and foremost, when I am shuffling or when I'm getting ready to work with the deck, um, and I've done this before because I've, you know, like I said, this is the third video, but what I'll go ahead and do, and I'll show you in the major, I'll show you in the minor arcana by shuffling that, is assuming this is a full deck, I'm always going to go four times. This is my ritual that I do, closing my eyes, thinking about the question, that I want to be able to create. And I'm just asking for a guide that can help us as a collective be able to create peace and fulfillment in our lives, right? That's what this read is going to be about. How do we create peace and how do we create fulfillment in our lives, all right? And so I did that four times as I'm thinking that. And then I'm thinking silently and going ahead and splitting the deck with a little shuffle. And then four times again. From there, I'm going to go ahead, if a card does not fall out, I'll go ahead and spread it out. And then because you have energetically connected with your cards at the heart center, you're really practicing feeling. So the first thing that I notice is like where in the deck my, my uh, hand or my eyes are going to front, middle, back, whatever. And then I zone in on a card. And because I'm an energy worker, that card usually is sending or is emitting some type of choose me frequency that allows me to be able to do that. Now, whenever I'm choosing a minor arcana, that really is talking about the overall um, traits of the ancestor that we're going to be working with, okay? And then I'm going to do that same um, thing with the court cards because the court card is going to be the first card that I'm going to choose because that's going to connect me with um, the personality of the ancestor that we're going to be working with today. The personality of the ancestor. That is what we are going to be able to do. So I'm going to go ahead and shuffle these all. And uh, we'll do a little fast forward. All right. All right, through the magic of television, everything has been shuffled and uh, ready to go. And so I'm going to show a demonstration of how I read this deck, all right? So again, the first card that I'm going to be pointing to is the Father of Coins. And I love that because we're talking about fulfillment, right? That's what we're talking about, how we are reaching towards fulfillment. And so, of course, we want the Father of Coins to be able to help us with that. That is a worthy God to be able to call up. And again, the more specific you can get about what you need, the more specific the ancestor will come down. So again, why I love this deck. She's starting off with the traits, which is economic and discipline. Let me tell you something. Discipline has been coming up in every reading I've been doing um, for the collective, spiritual discipline, physical discipline. Um, she breaks down the card description, which I'm not going to read. Well, I'll read it. 
uh, she breaks down the card description and the card descriptions are very important in, in every deck because every deck is embodied with a certain type of language and the more that you can understand the symbolism and what the artist why why the artist put what where it allows you better to intuitively read when you're not being able to use the book so you can get away from the memorization and let the symbols be able to speak to you the father of coin stands in front of a table covered in Kyrie shells. Behind him, his ancestors are showcased on the wall. He, in a worldly and material sense, has made it and is financially secure. Isn't that what we all want? We all want a little financial security. The father of coins knows that mindsets matter and he has the ultimate abundance mindset, solidifying him and future generations great ancestor to work with. The card serves as a warning to be wary of letting material security hold too much precedence. And if you think about it, that's really what brings most of us suffering is like our attachment to these physical things. I I, I speak for me. I, you know, it's the things, it's, oh, well, you know, the material things that, you know, bring on the suffering because we don't want to lose anything, right? All right, so the father of coins, uh, this card, I'm sorry, the father of coins as a protector and provider knows the value of wealth as well as the burden it carries. Stay grounded while pursuing your aspirations. The father of coins immerses his goals and responsibilities in love. He is patient and consistent, working for the good of all and not just for his own glory. This is like masculine energy. So I love that, you know, we have this provider and protector ancestor, this father, like father, son, right? Almost coming down, just trying to connect with us. So I love that message in here. Now, again, she breaks down the yin and yang energy. So here, what we're trying to achieve in yang is responsibility, heritage, connecting with our ancestors, receptivity, right? Receptiveness, just being open to all of the different messages and elements that are around wealth, okay? And security. I mean, it's an impermanent place, but, you know, we can try to get spiritual security and like really trusting the unknown, trusting, becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable. That's really the practice, y'all. That is really the practice. So we're getting away from poor money management, from scamming, from a high focus on materialism and corruption. Look, New Earth doesn't have any room for that, okay? And I love how we are really understanding that true masculine energy is the energy of service. So as she is giving us a pattern to change, she is asking us to, or the ancestors through this deck is asking us to lead a service project, right? So um, I feel like my, my whole life is a service project right now. So, but yeah, where are you? You know, that might be an area you need to kind of pull away from the materialism and the me and mine and the for survival mode and really see where you could be of service to the collective. And I think that's the main message. You know, let's try to figure out how we can be more in service to the collective, Ashe. All right. So when we think about like the father of coins and we think about the personality, because there's a lot of protector and providers out there. But, you know, what type of protector or provider is this one? And this ancestor is the ancestor, the disruptor. All right. So this is the revolutionary that's coming in. He's coming in as a that Ogun energy, like pr coming in to protect by any means necessary, almost with balance, of course. But here the traits are destruction and disruption. A devastated shoreline is littered with trees. Trees have been destroyed. Our world is in a dire state. Without strong protective action and time for healing of ourselves and the planet, it will be impossible for the world to cover. So uh, recover. So this ancestor is really a service oriented. It's it's a really about coming out of this me and mine energy and really tapping into the indigenous ancestors that work together for the good of the community. 
Um, the tower serves as a warning of sudden change and the trauma that can come from disruption and destruction. BIPOC communities worldwide have practiced in indigenous and traditional ways of living in symmetry with nature and her spirits, existing in harmony with the earth of the millennia. These two cards couldn't go better together. I mean, is there any way that it could? This is an excellent message of really us taking better care of ourselves, us taking better care of our community and each other, and that being a way that we can be able to solidify our wealth. You know, this video is in part because of, you know, the what Lana shared with me, right? And on top of that, her and I worked together on decolonizing the wisdom of your ancestors, and we talked about generational wealth. And one thing that she said is that 100 is holding the resource for the 9,900. And we were breaking down numbers just talking about that 1% that we all talk about. And so what we all do is the 9900 is always looking for the 1% to give us some, share some. And they're just not going to do that, okay? They're not going to do that. That's not in their best interest to share, all right? Um, they want to have caste and they want to have economy so that we can all be fighting amongst ourselves. So in this card, it's asking us to like, uh, look, I don't even have, let me, let me just read the card, okay? I don't have to make this up. All right. White supremacy, the patriarchal patriarchy and capitalism, political and economic systems that favor greed and consumption over a tradition of conservation and balance have poisoned our planet. I don't have to say anything more. What I was feeling coming up was hitting even before the message, Ashe. We got a hundred people that are creating a scarcity mindset, meanwhile trying to front and act like they're, in, they're doing things for our best interest. Please and believe they are not. They are doing things for their best interest. And so if there's going to be this separation that they've created, then the 9900, we have to take that father of coins energy. We have to become the disruptors and we have to create our own systems so that we can be able to create for ourselves. This is the this is the period. The old way is no longer viable. That's not that that capitalism, you know, uh, you know, kill or be killed, eat or eat, um inferior, I'm I'm inferior, no, I'm superior, all of that BS. That is not viable. The old way is no longer viable. We can no longer live, eat, and interact without the health and stability of the environment in mind. This is a true call for us to get back. Like we, if we want our ancestors to protect us, we have to then protect what they created. With they, we stand on their shoulders and we can bitch and moan about all the trauma that they left us. But there's some really serious things that our ancestors created that are still viable. We just have to marry the technology with our indigenous mind, okay? And so we can use technology to help one another, not use it to create more systems of caste, Ashe. I love this, all right? So this is great. Then she's giving some key questions here to ask within this card. Do you view your dollar as a vote towards the world you believe in? Boop. Ow. And I love how this tower is like, we're talking about fulfillment, right? That was our question that we put out there or I put out there for the collective. I was led to put out there. And this is about coins. We're talking about money. So I love that this card is reiterating that this ancestor is trying to come in and help us redecide how we're going to move around with wealth. And I think that's crazy that this comes up at a time where you have myself and Lana, two business women who are who are move trying to move this message forward i think it's kind of poetic if you ask me are you experiencing a breakthrough or a breakdown and i'm here to tell you even in a breakdown can be a break up okay sometimes we think a break up is something that's separate but sometimes you gotta break up okay you gotta break to be able to take the rubble and 
create a step like if even if you think on the ancestors are showing me like a long board right this long board that maybe can't be a source of elevation but if you break off little pieces and you use those to build up now you built a step ladder and now you're breaking up okay so a breakdown can be a break up i love that can you see beyond your ivory tower I love that. Now, if you are a person who likes to use herbs and floral uh, flowers in your practice, she also has in here specifically for the major arcana cards, um, the flower, the element of the card, the chakra. This is solar plexus and root chakra because we really are starting all over again, deciding who we want to be as beings on this planet and, and what type of, of, of world we want to create. You know, we got to start thinking about that any yang upheaval emotional strife sudden change revelation chaos disaster unhealthy relationships emptiness and loneliness negative or hostile environment failure bankruptcy vulnerability to disease divorce and tragedy and then yin fear of change personal transformation avoiding loss delaying the inevitable warnings of serious illness but also averting disaster and we can begin to avert disaster by being able to change our mindsets so here aligning is just realigning with your purpose take a walk at night i love that idea go with a friend though affirmations i am safe and divinely protected throughout all challenges i face this is such a beautiful message i think this is great and so keep this in mind when you're thinking about what's going to ultimately bring you fulfillment because this ancestor that's coming forward is saying I have the courage, I have the discipline to be able to disrupt in the best way possible for us to bring the new change towards the world. Now, when we look at the trait inside of us that we need to be able, I love this. I just, I'm so in love with this. I'm so in love with this reading. I tell you, it's definitely much more positive, but it's kind of still in the same lines as the prior uh, reading on the first video that had the lawnmower in the background, okay? And for this 10 of wands, 10 of wands, this is great because, you know, 10 of wands is usually when you have really gotten what you need in order for you to move to the next stage in your manifestation process, which is bringing it all into your emotions. Like 10 of wands, in my opinion, is not having it together, right? We're not in 10 of pentacles, right? We're things coming into the 3D. But this is a completion because once we brought it into our mindset to fruition there, then we can begin to bring it into our bodies and move forward into bringing things into action. But this is burden and responsibility. A woman walks with a baby on her back, bags in her hands, and a pile of collected sticks on her head. She bears a heavy load and has an overwhelming number of commitments and responsibilities. How many of you all are feeling like that? Like this, I can't take nothing else. I had a family member called and said she needed a fit favor. It took me into a state of anxiety. I still haven't called that person. Just because overwhelm, overall, it's like I'm a little bit overwhelmed with everything that's going on in the world and in my life. So I know I'm not the only one. You're probably experiencing that too. But the card carries humanitarian energy on an individual community and collective level. This is another call towards community. Although giving is an act of love our world needs, be wary of giving too much of yourself, right? This is about really identifying um, in order to move more towards fulfillment. What are you giving to others that you need to give to yourself? right fulfillment starts from the inside out and so we can't look for fulfillment from the outside in we need to be able to do that i've been really on this fulfillment journey and really searching it for myself which is why i put on a, a few pounds 
because you know while it's marinating and it's wondering in your mind you know you can look to for external things to bring on that comfort, to bring on that stability that you are searching. It's really a call for you when you find yourself overeating. It is a call for you to go into this journey of like what is fulfilling to me so I'm not eating what I'm trying to get from the outside. So while you're doing that work, you know, even if you you got to have some cheeseburgers, I always honor 3D work. You know, you can always lose the weight later, you know, because it really does start from energetically. So if you need the cheeseburger <laughs> to help you, like really don't just eat the cheeseburger and numb out though. If you're going to use the cheeseburger, go inside in your emotions and be like, why am I eating this cheeseburger? I'm eating this cheeseburger because I'm not fulfilled out and I'm so uh, and and food is the only thing that I that's easy for me to access or you know uh plant medicine is the easiest thing that I have to access. Sometimes I I'm, I'm I'm a compassionate healer. I'm never going to judge anybody for what they're doing to get through this this 3D journey, right? But just be intentional, right? Just kind of go inside and see what you're really trying to figure out. Um, the Ten of Wands reminds us to avoid becoming exploited in service to others. Whether the burden you are carrying is your own or others, it is essential to find a release. Ultimately, you must ensure that your cup is constantly being refilled and that what you give out to the world can be sourced from the overflow of the saucer. Your cup might always be full. You are not, um, your cup must always be full you are not your achievements and successes so take time to savor life remember rest is also revolutionary i'm getting this message of rest a lot rest i feel guilty about resting uh you know there's so much to do but lately my body has just really been demanding it which is causes you know am i procrastinating or do i really need to rest and then i i heard this message that we should we should rest because our ancestors couldn't and some of our ancestors that were brought here uh wherever they went out through the diaspora and went out everywhere if you were being removed for labor purposes or even if you were indigenous to this field and and you were affected by colonialism you know life got life got hard <laughs> life got challenging when the colonists came in and you know we had to do a lot of struggling to to make things come together and that still can live within our dna code so we have to remember to rest and to relax i will be doing that when i when i get this video done just resting and relaxing i'll, I'll go back into my relaxed state for a little bit all right, so this is the end of economic struggle, which we are wanting when we look for fulfillment. Bittersweet, and well, me, maybe that's not it, what everybody's trying to do. Some people have financial stability and they, they that maybe love is the way that you are looking to be fulfilled. Or maybe you want to become an entrepreneur. Expression is a way that you need to be fulfilled. I'm still working through some root chakra areas, uh, obviously. So, you know, right now, you know, that's a struggle. It definitely. I'm, I'm looking forward to the end of economic struggle. This also, um, bittersweet and liberating death, ending exploitation and abuse, release, self-care and taking time off. You know, that I think that's really important for us right now to, to take a little time to reflect during this Mercury retrograde and really see areas where you can maybe pull back a little bit. Um... Let's see, head towards, uh, in yin, heading towards illness because of responsibilities, too much on your plate, having the impression you cannot do enough, unbalanced, no peace of mind, and discrimination. And so this here is saying, spend time creating with people who inspire and uplift you. So I think that was just a really a great reading. You know, if you stuck around for that, that was just a beautiful message of fulfillment. Uh, get this deck and read the definitions for yourself. 
but overall the ancestor that is trying to help us is an ancestor that is the father of coins that's very disciplined he is he or she is a disruptor that is here to get us to change patterns change how we think things i like to call this the great reset okay i i heard the financial analyst said but this is the time where we are totally rewiring everything we're rewiring how we are approaching things and i think it's important and it, it's going to be super important for us to really come together to regroup to decide what type of community we want to be what type of community we want to become and really work together so i hope you like this deck as much as i do i love it i hope to meet the author one day and um, I just love everything about it. So go ahead to the Honey Pot Energy and Arts Metaphysical Shop. Again, you can go to energyandarts.com to be able to get the deck. And guess what? If you join the Ancestral Healing Circle, you get a 15% whenever you purchase anything online and in the store if you are a member of the Ancestral Healing Circle. So you guys have a great and wonderful life. Go and get ready for the Great Reset. Check in with your ancestors and change your life today.